Hello everyone and welcome to today's lecture on two crucial tests in pharmaceutical quality control, content uniformity and weight variation. These tests are essential for ensuring the consistency and reliability of different dosage form. We'll dive deep into these tests, their calculation, even introduce you to a helpful Excel calculator. So let's get started. Welcome to the pharmacy channel. Before getting into the details of this lecture, please consider subscribing and enable the notification button to stay updated once a new content is published on the channel. First, let's discuss the definition, significance, and difference between content uniformity and weight variation. Basically, content uniformity is a test that determines the consistency of the active pharmaceutical ingredient, the API. It determines its distribution within a patch of a dosage unit. This test verifies that each unit contains the labeled amount of the drug within acceptable limits. Weight variation, on the other hand, measures the consistency of the individual dosage unit weight. It serves as an indirect measure of the content uniformity, assuming that the API is uniformly distributed throughout the formulation. These tests are vital for ensuring patient safety, maintaining product quality and efficacy, and complying as well with the regulatory requirements. Now, you may be wondering when to apply each test. Here is a simple guideline. Content uniformity test is applied to dosage form containing less than 25 mg of the API, or if the API represents less than 25% of the unit weight. However, the weight variation test is used for dosage form containing 25 mg or more of the API, or if the API represent 25% weight per weight or more of the unit weight. And this table is showing the application of the content uniformity and weight variation test for different dosage forms as per the USP. The acceptance criteria for both tests are based on what's called the acceptance value, which must be less than or equal to L1. So what is L1? L1 is a threshold value, typically 15% unless otherwise specified, while L2 is another threshold which is 25%. These thresholds are used because the tests are conducted in two levels. Level 1 is initially performed on 10 units. If the results meet the criteria, the batch is accepted. So the criteria for level 1, as mentioned before, is to have the AV or the acceptance value less than or equal to 15%. And if this is not the case, we move to level 2, where 20 additional extra units are tested and the calculations are performed on all the 30 units together to reach a final conclusion. In order to pass level 2, two conditions must be met. The acceptance value for the third unit must not exceed L1, or 15%. And the second condition is no individual unit content or estimated content calculated as Xi should fall outside the lower and upper limit calculated by those equations. The lower limit would be equal to 1 minus L2 multiplied by 0.01 altogether multiplied by M. And the upper limit would be 1 plus L2 multiplied by 0.01 altogether multiplied by M. And the acceptance value is calculated based on this equation. Acceptance value equals the absolute difference between M value minus X bar plus KS. Don't bother yourself with the definition of those values as of now, as we will revisit these values and calculation later in the session. So both content uniformity and weight variation are almost similar to each other in the procedure of calculation. But the main difference between the two tests is how the individual drug content is determined. For content uniformity, the API content in each unit is chemically analyzed by extracting and quantifying it using a suitable analytical method. So simply by extracting the API from each unit using a suitable solvent and determining the amount of the API using your analytical method. In this way, you are going to obtain the XI value or the actual drug content for each unit using the calibration curve after making the necessary calculation. However, for the weight variation test, we are only estimating the individual drug content in each unit based on its weight. Yes, we are performing a kind of chemical assay, but this analytical assay is not applied on each unit, but on a bold sample of the units, so as to obtain the API content, and this is what's called the assay test. The aim of the assay test is getting what's called the assay value A. The assay value is then used to estimate the individual content XI using the following formula. XI equal WI over W bar multiplied by E. WI is the individual weight for each unit. W bar is the mean or average weight for all the units and E is the assay value. So let's get into the calculation process step by step. 
Once we have the XI values determined, we will follow the same calculation steps for both content uniformity and weight variation. So step one is calculation of the X bar for the XI values of the 10 units. That's mean we are getting the average of the 10 units. Okay, that's cool. Now we have the X bar value is calculated. Step two is a little bit complicated or tricky. In this step, we wanna calculate the M value. And the M value is a reference value and its value depend on the value of T and then the value of X bar. So again, what is T value? T value is the target Target content of the drug substance at the time of manufacturing. It is expressed as a percentage of the label claim. You may say that the target should be 100% by logic, and you are correct. However, the T value in some cases can be different from 100% due to various factors, like, for example, overage. In case of overage, manufacturers may intentionally add a small excess of the active ingredient to account for degradation during shelf life. Also, for a specific product requirement, some products may have a target slightly different from from 100% due to formulation constraints or stability considerations. So how this can affect the calculation of the M value? Well, we have two cases here for T value, upon which the calculation of the M value will differ. We have case one, if the T value is less than or equal to 101.5%, then we can calculate the M value based on the X par value as per this table. So if X par is more than or equal to 98.5% and less than or equal to 101.5%, then the M value will be equal equal to x bar and then the equation will simplify into av equal ks s is the standard deviation of the 10 units and the k is a constant value that equals to 2.4 in case you are testing on 10 units or equals to 2 in case you are testing on 30 units. If X bar is less than 98.5%, then the M value is set to 98.5%. And then the equation will be acceptance value equal 98.5% minus X plus KS. If X bar is more than 101.5%, then M value is capped to 101.5% and the equation will be acceptance value equal X minus 101.5% plus KS. In case two, where T value is more than 101.5%, the same process applies, but here we will use the T value in place of 101.5% as per this table, and the acceptance value can be calculated using the relevant equation. In step three, we make our judgment on the calculation of the acceptance value for the first 10 units. If it is equal or less than L1 or 15%, then the batch is accepted. Otherwise, we proceed to level two and perform the test on extra 20 units. Step four, we recalculate the X bar value again based on the whole 30 units and determine the acceptance value. Keep in mind that the k value in this level will be 2 instead of 2.4 as we are performing the test on 30 units. Step 5. At this stage and as mentioned before the acceptance criteria will be met on two conditions. The acceptance value for the 30 units altogether is not more than L1 threshold or 15% and no individual unit of the tablet has a calculated XI value less than the lower limit or more than the upper limit. So let's take an example for the calculation of the upper and lower limit. If the M value was determined to be 99%, then the lower limit is calculated as follow. 1 minus 25 multiplied by 0 0.01 multiplied by 99. So the calculation will be 74.25% at the lower limit. And doing the same for the upper limit, we will have the calculation equals to 123.75%. And accordingly, no unit of the 30 unit should be outside this range or being lower than the lower limit or higher than the upper limit. So if both conditions are met, we say that the batch is accepted, otherwise it should be rejected and no more testing is required. Now we are introducing you to the Excel calculator. To help you perform these calculations easily, we have created an Excel calculator that automates this process. You can simply download it from the link in the description below. The Excel calculator has an introductory sheet for instructions of how to use it. Additionally, multiple tabs have been added to cover all cases of t-values, as well as the multiple pass and fail scenarios for both content uniformity or weight variation tests. In the yellow shaded cells in the calculator, it allows you to input the labeled amount of the active form pharmaceutical ingredient and the back calculated ABI amount for each unit in case you are working on the content uniformity. Alternatively, you can also input the unit's average weight and the assay value and the individual weight for each unit in case you are working on the weight variation test. In both cases, you will need as well to add the target content or the T value according to its case, either it is case one or case two, but make sure to use the correct sheet that are relevant to your case because calculation differ according to the case. However, within the same case, say case one, for example, 
example, you can use any of the sheets interchangeably. After adding the input value, the file will automatically compute the mean and the standard deviation, the M value, the acceptance value, the L2 range limits, number of units outside the L2 range, as well as the final pass fail result. This tool can be incredibly helpful in your quality control processes, saving time and reducing the chance of calculation error. So make sure to read the instructions sheet before starting using this file to be able to use it efficiently without any mistakes. Reaching to our conclusion for today's session, understanding and correctly applying content uniformity and weight variation test is crucial for ensuring the quality and consistency of pharmaceutical products. Remember, content uniformity directly measures the API distribution, while weight variation is an indirect method used for higher dose formulations. The calculations can be complex, especially when considering different scenarios for the t-value and the potential need for additional testing. That's why tools like our Excel calculator can be so valuable in your quality control toolkit. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to download the Excel calculator using the link in the description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content on pharmaceutical science and catch you the next video.